If you run a limited company, then no matter how small it is, there are two things that you have to submit to Companies House every year. Firstly, you have to submit annual accounts, and secondly, you have to submit something called a confirmation statement, which used to be called an annual return, but in 2016, the name was changed to confirmation statement. Now, a lot of people use an accountant to do this for them, and they spend a lot of money unnecessarily, because it's dead easy to do both those things yourself. In this film, I'll show you how you can very easily submit your own confirmation statement in under 10 minutes. It's really easy and it'll save you a fortune on accountant's fees. If you watch my other film on YouTube, I'll also show you how to submit your annual accounts. And once again, it might seem daunting, but it's actually really quick and really easy. But first of all, this is how you submit a confirmation statement to Companies House in under 10 minutes. First thing you need to do is get onto the company's house website and the correct address to get onto that website is on screen now. There have been rumours of a few scam sites so make sure you only use the web address that's on screen now. Don't use any other address that you might find on Google, just use the address that I've given you on screen now. And you'll come to this home page and there are lots of different things you can do relating to your company. But today, obviously, we're just going to talk about filing your confirmation statement. Obviously, you can also file your accounts, you can set up a company, you can close down your company. But today we're just talking about filing your confirmation statement. It's dead easy to do it. You can do it in under 10 minutes. You do not need any specialist knowledge. But one thing that's very important, and that is you've got to get your passwords right, because you will have two different passwords, one of them for the web filing service and another one for getting onto the company's house website. And if you get the password wrong four times or more, then you'll get locked out and it can be a pain in the neck. So before you even start this process, make sure you've got both your passwords. That's one for web filing and it's a different password for getting onto the company's house website. Now there are different ways you can do this. There's the old way which is using the web filing service and then if your company has less than five officers there is a new way that's being tested out by Companies House. But I'm going to show you the old way which is using the web filing service which still exists and will always exist um, and this is for any company. So no matter how big or small your company you can use the web filing service. The, once you get into the system it's pretty much the same whichever you do. Um, but if you use the newer system, you have to have under five officers uh, or under five people um, of uh, significant control of the company. So the way I'm showing you using the web filing service uh, can be used by absolutely any uh, private company. So first of all, you click sign in and then you have to choose the uh, the web filing service and um, some of this process does seem a little bit strange sometimes because it's asking you to do things several times for example when you start submitting your passwords it does ask you several times but another thing you need in addition to your passwords is your company number and your authentication code have them ready before you start the process if you don't know your authentication code then get it in advance you have to get it by post and it can take up to seven days to arrive so if you know the date that you've got to do your filing make sure you apply for the authentication code at least a week before and you can use the same code every every single year it's the same code you don't have to apply for a new one every year as long as you've got it in your first year then use it forever but also you need to know your company number and obviously it's very easy to find that out just type the name of your company and your company number will come up you'll, you'll know that anyway when you first set up your company and then obviously you decide where you're based well most people watching this will be England or Wales so continue 
and it comes up then with your registered office address, type of company, well it's private limited company, the date you set up, well in my company's case it was September 2006 and then at this point you have to put in your authentication code. Now, now treat this code exactly like you would a password. It's very important you keep it secret. So obviously I'm not going to show you my code. This is as good as a password. So it should be kept just as confidential as if it was a password. So make sure you've got the code in advance. As I say, you can't get it at the last minute online. You have to get it by post by good old-fashioned post now companies house say to allow at least five days but I advise leaving at least seven days so if you're going to apply for an authentication code then you can you can actually apply for it online but it gets sent to you in a private envelope using Royal Mail and as I say make sure you allow at least seven days to get it keep it secure keep it safe don't tell anyone what your code is and most important thing is have it ready before you start this process you don't want to end up getting locked out so I've entered my code obviously I've kept it secret so that you can't see it and there are one or two other things as we go through this process that I'm going to blank out just for reasons of confidentiality relating to my own company my company well actually I run several companies but the one I'm going to show you today is a marketing agency called the News Hound Limited which I set up in 2006 and here, as you can see, it comes up with the company information. You'll know all this information already, and it'll give you the date for your accounts to be submitted and the date for your confirmation statement. Well, if you want to know how to do your accounts, watch my other film on YouTube. It's very easy to do it yourself, but today we're going to file the confirmation statement. Sometimes it might be the same date that you do both of them, and it's quite useful to do them both at the same time. But depending on when you set up your company and when you set up your account date, you might have different dates. So in the case of my company, I submit my confirmation statement on a different date to when I set up my annual accounts. And it depends really when you set up your company and when you asked for your accounts to be set up from. Because you can actually choose when you set up a company. It doesn't have to be the normal financial year. In my case, I chose to do my accounts from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. But you can choose whatever date you want. And likewise, you can also choose what date to do your confirmation statement. And you can change it. You can bring it forward, but you can't make it later. So each year, as you do your confirmation statement, if you want to, you can make it earlier in the year, but you can't make it later. And remember, you must do it in time. If you don't do it in time, then you could get fined a lot of money by company's house and eventually you would get struck off altogether so please 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 remember the date put it in your diary and make sure you do your confirmation statement in time every year I suggest doing it a few days early just in case there's anything goes wrong or in case there's any kind of technical glitches get it done early so we're working our way through the uh, process at the moment online and the first thing is you just have to go through a few clicks, yes, no. It's pretty straightforward, this bit of the, uh, of the process. It gets a little bit more complicated as you get through. But as I said earlier, anybody can do it. You don't have to be an accountant. It really is a simple process. So first of all, the confirmation statement date. Well, mine is in August. So that's the first thing, just checking on the date and then work your way through the process and you keep clicking next and it will ask you a series of pretty simple questions which um, as I say you don't need an accountant to know how to do this I'm going to explain in the next few minutes exactly what to put at each stage and trust me this is simple this is the page of the actual confirmation statement itself and all you have to do is go through each of these questions and answer them according to um, what is relevant. Now, in most cases, there'll be no changes. There could be some changes, and I'll show you as we go through, but in most cases, you'll literally just be opening each of these boxes, confirming, 
and then going to the next one. So for most people, there actually won't be any change. So first of all, registered email address. You have to put your registered email address in, and this is actually something brand new. You didn't used to have to provide a registered email address, and I haven't done it in the past. So right now, I'm going to, for the first time, in many years actually provide them with a registered email address and that's all you do first box just put in an email address then your registered office well if it hasn't changed you do nothing the officers well I've there's two for my company company secretary and myself and again um, that might not have changed so you don't do anything unless your office has changed and then you go on to registers which almost certainly won't have changed. So again, you don't need to do anything at all. Just open the box and then close the box. The next one, the standard industrial classification code, the SIC code. Now, um, you can change this if you want to, if your company has changed in terms of what you're actually doing. So um, my company do two main things. We do public relations, communications, marketing, and also some training courses, higher education training, because I do do some work in universities as uh, a business studies and management lecturer. So I've got two codes. You can have as many as you want. You can add them, you can take them away. But to be quite honest, most people won't change them. They'll just check that they're correct. And once they're correct, if you want to change them, change them. Most people won't bother. Most people will just keep them as they are. And then onto the share capital. Well, again, it's very unlikely this will have changed. If it has changed, you can easily change it. But for most people, it will be the same as when you set up the company. And most people these days, they'll set up a company with maybe 100 shares. I, I issued 100 shares in 2006 when I set up my company. I own all the shares. Each share is worth £1 each. So we have total share capital of £100. It's dead easy. Again, you probably won't change that. This will all stay the same virtually every year. And then you've got the shareholders. Again, 100 shares. Each one's worth a pound and I'm the person who owns all the shares. So again, that won't change unless you've got a new shareholder. But for most people watching this, people who are running a small business, it'll probably just be you. It might be your partner if there's more than one of you. But usually all you'll do is click it, open it, check it, close it. Simple as that. You don't have to do anything. And then people with significant control. And that's a new thing from a few years ago. Again, that probably won't change unless you've got new um, new people who have control over your company. It'll probably just be you. Or if there's two of you or three of you, then again, it's probably not going to change anyway. If you want to change it, you don't actually have to change it at this stage. You can change it any time you want during the year. But this is just something you're confirming that there hasn't been any change since the last one. So all of those boxes, in most cases, people will just open them, check it's correct, and then close them. You'll nearly always not actually make any changes at all at this stage. You'll just be literally opening the box, check it's OK, and that's it. You close it. And believe it or not, that's all you have to do. How simple was that? Well, actually, it's not all you have to do. There's one other thing you have to do, and that is pay. And unfortunately, the price has gone up now to £34. It didn't used to be that. Um, it's gone up quite substantially. It hadn't been uh, increased for a very long time, actually. And it probably won't be increased for another five or six years. So hopefully, um, when you're watching this film, even if you're watching it a long time in the future, it'll still only be £34. But then that's it. And then the final thing is you actually have to pay. Well, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to fill this bit in because it uh, has got all my credit card details. So that's where we finish, really. And that's all you have to do. So it is so simple. Um, just opening and closing those boxes, there's a very high probability that you won't actually have to change anything. But even if you do have to change anything, it is really, really simple. Um, it just doesn't take long. You do not need an accountant to do this for you. You can do it yourself in under 10 minutes. In fact, you can do it in five minutes and it'll save you a lot of money. Well, I hope you found that useful. I do need to just stress that this is purely for submitting your accounts to Companies House or submitting your confirmation statement to Companies House. When it comes to paying tax, I always advise people to use a fully qualified accountant to help them with their tax bill for HMRC.
But in terms of submitting your accounts and your confirmation statement to Companies House, it's really, really quick and easy and anyone can do it and save themselves a lot of money on paying an accountant. My name's Darren Bug. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. I'm uploading very useful business films, especially aimed at small businesses, every single week. So don't forget to subscribe. And if you could like this film and share it, I'd really appreciate it as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.